Today I'm replacing an EV charger that was only installed less than five months ago. Now why would someone want a five month old charger replaced? All will be revealed a bit later on. So what we're doing is swapping out this Podpoint charger for a Nomi Home Pro. replacing this. So when the customer had this installed originally it was by a rather large company and I won't name who. The cable route comes out through the wall and it goes up and it goes over the top of the roof. Now the customer explained to me they did have two options. The cable could have been clipped at low level along this wall but they opted for over the top because they just didn't want the cable on show. The way it's been done though isn't great from completely honest of you and I would like to replace the cable, but it's not within the budget today. But this is what they've been left with. Which doesn't look great. And they've also used a high tough cable with a separate Cat5 with these rubbish cleats. The whole thing's basically just a cheap install. And I wanna make improvements where I possibly can on this installation. So my client today, I'm gonna to refer to as Mr. Smith. Just for ease, it's not his real name. While I tell you this story. So Mr. Smith <laughs> had this installation chucked in with the purchase of his vehicle. Now, what you get with this normally is an absolute nightmare um, and an installation that certainly could be better. Oh, look at that. So when you buy a new electric car, you get offered sometimes a charger with the car. And what happens is these manufacturers have got deals with EV manufacturers and they sell it to you as a really sweet deal. And like, it's just gonna be such a smooth job, you're gonna face no issues. However, that's not always the case. One more. So the process will go a little bit like this. You'll buy your car, you'll get sweet talked into your EV charging point by your salesman, who normally doesn't know a thing about EV charging points or the installation. And I get it, it's just convenient to get the car, get the charging point all built in one package. I get it, honestly. So anyway, what will happen is that you'll have to fill out an online form. Gland's not even done up. It'll ask you to send a load of photos of your house, your consumer unit, your meter, your cutout, and where you want your charger and the cable route. And with these bigger companies, you won't get an on-site survey. And they also have health and safety restrictions. So my customer filled out the form as requested and was informed that their installers wouldn't be able to put the cable over the top because it's working from height, which I understand. So that means now that Mr. Smith has to find an electrician to install this cable for him over the top so that EV charging point installer can just do this end and the consumer unit end. Costs start mounting all of a sudden because now you're paying for two contractors. Whereas if you've just done a little bit of work yourself and got a local guy in who specialises in this, the chances are you get a better installation, better materials, better quality of work. The customer support will be better because the guy is going to be local to you and he'll be able to carry out the whole job at a very similar cost to the quote that you've been provided by the car salesman. <laughs> Mr. Smith is changing his EV charging point because he's moved over to the OVO tariff. Now the OVO tariff doesn't tie in with any charger. To get the best rate, you need to have the Omi charger or the Indra charger. And financially, it's worked out that it's cheaper to get this replaced and go on the cheaper tariff in the long run and maintain the pod point. The Omi charger is nice and simple to install. They give you all the parts, the charger, the cable bracket, CT clamp and whisker box, holster and screws. And a little tip for you, don't use these wall plugs and screws for screwing the only charger to the wall. I've had it in the past where the screws snap if you try and take them back out. So you throw them in the bin. On the back of the charger is the bracket. All you need to do is unscrew it there. It could be a bit of a pain getting the screw out, so just tip it up and knock it out. And then the bracket comes off ready for mounting.
And that is the only charger mounted. As installed, is we don't have access to the connections in here. They provide you with a pre-wired flex, which you need to terminate into a whisker box and then connect up your supply cable to that. So if you don't like loads of junction boxes on the outside of your house, if you haven't got the option to put it on the inside, don't get the Omi, but it is what it is and that's how it comes. To support the cable that comes out of the Omi charger, I'm going to be using these D-Line EV Ultra cable clips. This would be a good example to show the comparison on how these look as a finished product compared to cable cleats. All you need to do is drill a 5mm pilot hole into the brickwork, which I've done, and then use these self-tapping screws and just screw them in place. And you get a really good fixing. These are also a massive time saver because you haven't got to drill loads of holes, put wall plugs in them, put the cleats over the top of the cable, get it all in place. I absolutely love these. The clips also have several little holes that you can latch this side through. So this accommodates for bigger and smaller size cables. And all you do is simply put your cable in place, put it through the appropriate hole like that, and then fold the tab back. Look how quick that is. And that looks much smarter than that. So that's the whisker box installed and both cables terminated inside it. Now I'm going to go and change the consumer unit and then get the testing done. So this is the replacement consumer unit I've put in. I've put in the grey BG one with the 40 amp MCB, 32 amp MCB for the surge protection device, a 40 amp type A double pole RCD and then the surge at the end. So that's the finished OMI installation done, all tested, complete. I've used EV Ultra cable clips down here I can to tidy up this side. You've got the whisker box there, the new consume unit inside. And that's it really. To commission this, it's really nice and simple. So to summarise, if you're getting an EV charging point installed and you're getting it part of a package with your car, and the deal sounds really sweet, but there's probably a reason for that. These big companies, they have a lot of costs to cover, which means that the materials that they use are going to be cheaper. And the, the pressure they put the installers under is phenomenal. Those guys do not earn a lot of money and they have to complete a couple of these a day. And with that, as you can imagine, the quality of work is reduced. So give a local guy a go, see what quotation you get, have a look. If they do social media, you can actually get a visual of their work and what you're going to get. The local guy is going to be easier to get hold of, hopefully, if there's an issue with the charger and it's good to support local business. Thanks for watching as always. Please hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you on the next one.